Let's go live now to another proud Queenslander, Senator Matt Canavan. You'd be welcoming this good news. It's fantastic news, uh, Laura. Um, it's uh, a sign of uh, uh, the, a reflection of the good work all Australians have done. Uh, we wouldn't have got to this stage if uh, we hadn't have been able to slow the numbers of, uh, of coronavirus cases down. Uh, I think uh, most Australians have done a remarkable job and uh, it has been a sacrifice and the sacrifices are much larger, of course, than not having the footy on TV. But not having our sport on TV is uh, something I've missed and uh, I think it'll be a fill-up for our society to get it back on, something all to rally around and talk about. And uh, uh, You know, it's just a shame. They're going to come up to Gladstone at one point, I think, which is just down the road from where I am at the moment. So that would be exciting for us up here in central Queensland. We don't have a team. But uh, we'll be turning our TVs in and watching it en masse uh, on May 28. Were you frustrated to see some players break social distancing rules in the midst of these negotiations, given that all Australians have been asked to pull their weight and it appears some hadn't? Oh, I, th I thought it was, it, was, it, was, it was just almost unbelievable. Uh, uh, I mean, in that, in that respect, it wasn't so much you know, the impact on potentially a season not going ahead and, and what you know, it means for me not... Uh, not being able to watch a game. It was the impact that those that behaviour had on their, their fellow uh, staff members at, at rugby league clubs. Uh, uh, sport's a big business and uh, uh, a lot of people lost their livelihoods uh, when the game shut down. My understanding of the players have still been paid. And that's good, good on them, good luck to them. But a lot of other people supporting the game, officials, uh, uh, trainers, coaches, uh, have, have gone without pay uh, in this period of shutdown. And, and for the players who are getting a wage to imperil all that through their own conduct was uh, just disgraceful. I was disappointed. I thought they should have sat on the bench for a few games. They've had a suspended sentence, which I think was a bit weak. Uh, but hopefully other players have uh, seen the public vitriol there and uh, will pull their head in and behave and, and will be able to get not just restart the season but finish the season. If I could get you to look a little further south from where you are now, we see a by-election looming in Eden Monero. Would you welcome John Barillaro as the candidate and potentially sitting in your party room too? I absolutely. Uh, I encourage John uh, to put his hand up. Uh, I think uh, we need um, strong uh, voices uh, uh, at the federal level. Uh, as I've said in the last few months, I think it's really important, more important than ever, uh, then there, that there are amplified voices defending the interests of, of country Australia. That's why I think the Nationalist Party remains incredibly important mm. to the future of our nation. Uh, John is a proven performer at the state level and he has a, has a loud voice, a uh, national profile. Uh, and and I'd, I'd love to see him run in that seat because he's such a great servant of that part of our country. He got a 52% primary at the state election. I mean, that's pretty, pretty bloody good. Not too many politicians crack 50 these days with the cynical electorate that, that is out there. And, and John's proven himself in that part of the world and, and uh, he'd be a great addition to our party room if he can get there and, uh, and, uh, and win the seat. Well, the Liberals reserve their right to run a candidate as well. It's looking like that candidate could very well be Jim Mullen. Is that going to be a, a tough choice for you? Uh, well, it won't be. I'm, I'm not, I won't have a vote, but if I did have a vote, I'd back the National, know, of course. You get an proud, endorsement. You have the a National, powerful voice. I'm proud the party, member of the Nationals Party. But I... I got a lot of time for Jim. He's a great bloke. Uh, so if, uh, if if Jim does run, I'll, I'll you know in a good sporting style wish him all the best. But uh, obviously want my 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 candidate, whoever that is, to, to run. But uh, uh, look, obviously the Liberal Party are, are you know perfectly free to to, to run in that seat. They've they've held it many times in our in our nation's past. Uh, I, I do think, given it's a rural and country electorate, uh, that the Nationals Party offer a unique. Uh, uh, a unique uh, leadership uh, that we can provide to that area. Uh, we know how to fight uh, to make sure uh, that projects are delivered, that infrastructure is delivered, that opportunities are protected uh, in regional and country electorates. And as I said, John Barillara has a record of doing just that. And well, he'd Senator, be a great what, member what will uh, for he Eden bring, Monero. Not just to Eden Monero, but what will he bring to the Nationals party room at a federal level? And I say this with all our viewers knowing that you have had a, a bit of a, a rocky patch over the last couple of months. Uh, it's well documented, I think, that John Barillaro and Barnaby Joyce aren't the uh, best of friends. And John Barillaro is obviously an ambitious politician. To, so does that bring some risk to further destabilisation within a party that's seen so much? Well, I, I think any healthy organisation uh, seeks to attract uh, and uh, 
encourage talent within its ranks. Uh, and there's no doubt that John Barilaro is an extremely talented uh, politician. Uh, uh, I want to see our party grow, uh, so picking up another seat um, is great because that helps us uh, in the fight to deliver uh, more for, for regional Australia. Uh, I think having uh, talented and, and, and well perf good performing members in your team helps everybody because it spurs everybody to do, to do better. Uh, so every successful organisation I've been a part, on, part of encourages uh, 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 good people. Uh, uh, actually supports uh, and promotes uh, talent and uh, I'd love to see uh, our ranks at the federal level and Nationals Party be, be given a fill up of, with someone yeah. of John's stature. Well, Lou O'Brien once tweeted as well to, for John Barilaro to leave it to the big boys at the federal level and uh, <laughs> perhaps uh, be quiet. <laughs> what do you think about that? Do you think that can be set aside or has uh, everyone got a long memory? I'm sure, I'm sure, I'm sure. Lou's a pretty big boy himself, I'm sure that will be. And uh, 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 again, it, it's that, look, it's, it's tension and, 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 and that competition, which is good. It's naturally healthy. It's naturally healthy to have, have people, uh, uh, good people in a team, uh, pushing and spurring each other on. And sometimes that spills over a bit. We're not afraid to tell it how it is or tell, tell the world what we think in the Nationals Party. Mm. Uh, uh, but uh, I've been, I've had plenty of blues and scrapes um, uh, one day and the next day you, you, your best mates and talking again uh, and that's the way it should be. Okay, before I let you go, uh, Twiggy Forrest certainly entered the political fray uh, this week. Do you think he did the, the wrong thing, the right thing by um, introducing the consul in Victoria, the Chinese consul, to the podium? Did that send the wrong messages at a time where we're trying to get this investigation underway? Well, in short, I think he did the wrong thing. Uh, but I also think he did a stupid thing, and uh, uh, a stupid thing for his own perspective and cause in this regard. Uh, I mean, Twiggy's view that he's expressed is that we should alter or change uh, the request we've made for independent review of the coronavirus uh, uh, to accede the, to the demands of the Chinese government, uh, because he, he's concerned about the economic fall. Other business leaders are concerned about the economic fallout uh, that may come unless we. Uh, modify our foreign policy settings in this regard. Now, what Twiggy did through that press conference stunt uh, 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 on Wednesday uh, just proved to, I think, almost all Australians how short-sighted uh, and silly uh, that position expressed by some of our business community is. It is completely absurd that we should outsource our nation's foreign policy to another country, that we should somehow factor in what might be the economic costs of a foreign policy decision because then we just become a dependent state and we don't want to be a dependent state, we want to be an independent nation. And if we have got ourselves in the position where the economic costs of being an independent nation are too high, well, we better bloody get ourselves out of that spot as soon as possible. And I do think we have to have a serious conversation about diversifying supply chains around the world mm. and in particular for our country's case. Uh, to have a diversified supply chain for our export markets so we're not put in these positions. Yeah, we need to have a longer conversation about that at another time. We'll try that on first edition next week. Matt Canavan, thanks so much for your time.